following podcast is presented by Secret Room Multimedia. Thunderdome, bitch. No. Thank you for choosing McDonald's. Still, still not right. This is Sparta. No, no, try again. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Getting, you're getting closer, warmer. You're listening to Fairpoint. I'm Craig Lewis, and I am Nathan Cavazer. And I don't know what just happened there. Right off the bat, disclaimer: I've had a sinus infection kicking my ass the last two days. I haven't been able to speak. I've got my beautiful voice back. It's not in peak condition. It's probably going to get worse as the night goes on. So would you say you're around a 70 right now? 70%? Yeah, and it's probably going to sink to at least a 50 throughout the portion of the episode because on our way here to the secret room, just talking in the car, it was killing my voice. But we are professionals. Professional. We and we are here always to rock your ear. Do our job. That sounded so much better. So you've been pretty sick. I had some bullshit happen to me. You might notice, I guess nobody out there listening would notice, but <laughs> I have new glasses. I miss the old glasses. I decided one day when I went to work, eh, I'm going to wear my glasses. You know, what could go wrong? What could be the worst thing to happen? Because I wear flexons, you know, the ones you can bend and break and stuff like that. And they don't, they're supposed to be like indestructible kind of. And you wait tables, correct? Yes, I do. Is that the PC way to describe how you work? I guess. Are you a server? I'm a server. Should I call you a server? Yes, I am a server at undisclosed restaurant in undisclosed part of New York. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm actually liking it because I, I would never wear them before because they were like kind of loose, but I tightened them up and I actually just started liking it. I was like, you know what? I, I look fine. And then somebody was like, oh yeah, you're finally wearing glasses. And I was like, yeah, check this out. And I go to bend it and it just snaps. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. They can normally just bend. Yeah. Yeah. You can bend them like all over, but apparently after a year and a half, you cannot. Oh, okay. (laughs) I've done this like hundreds of times and sure. Maybe that's worn on it, but it's supposed, that's what it's like the draw of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was going for a while, bummed out. I didn't have glasses, wearing my contacts, messing my eyes up because I'm wearing them too long. Like more for them, like 13, 14, 15 hours at a time. Okay. Because I can't see without them, you know. And I finally, uh, I found a really old pair of glasses in my parents' bathroom. I'm thinking, you know what? See, the mine are my sisters, whatever, but they're really dirty. So I clean them off, and now I kind of have them as replacement glasses. Uh, I feel like Harry Potter. <laughs> no, they look good. They're cool. Yeah. Or whatever. They're not too small in my head. They're a little small, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Morpheus has tiny glasses. Good, good point. So does steampunk Morgan Freeman. I do not know who Steampunk Morgan Freeman is. Steampunk Morgan Freeman from that Tom Cruise movie. Oh, Oblivion? Already, yeah, Oblivion. I didn't see that either. I didn't either. I don't like Tom Cruise. The special effects and everything look pretty cool, and Steampunk Morgan Freeman looks pretty cool. It's kind of weird how like most movies this year are kind of like apocalypse-type movies. That said, I think it's safe to jump right into the news. <laughs> jump 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 fair point news make you wanna jump jump <laughs> what mostly i'm just gonna come right and say it we're gonna talk about e3 uh and we're yeah. gonna talk about the ps4 because we talked about xbox one gotta but give I, the ps4 it's fair due it'll probably be more positive i'm sure well before we get into that i guess we'll just uh give you one tiny little interesting bit of movie news movie news the screenwriter for the upcoming Fifty Shades of Grey movie. Ooh, I am so enthralled right now. <laughs> Kelly Marcel is her name. Go on. Is writing a live action The Little Mermaid adaptation for Disney. Hmm. To be directed by Joe Wright. So it goes from midlife wife uh, porn to 
little kids live action classic adaption. Or she does we that could, first. We could go down another route and discuss how fucked up The Little Mermaid really is. Yeah, But Ariel is my favorite Disney princess, so I don't even want to get into that right now. <laughs> but why isn't Nala considered a Disney princess? She's not an actual female. Um, yes, she human, is. Human. She's not a human. So? She's a princess? So what? Alice guess... isn't even a princess, and she's in some Disney princess stuff. Is she? I've Alice? seen her before. She's not usually... But I've seen her in there before. I have to say, my favorite's Jasmine. See, a Disney princess isn't a princess, though. That's like that's like the term Disney princess. You don't have to be of right, actual but royalty. most of them are okay. Because yeah, Cinderella's in it, and she's not a yeah. But well, Nala she actually became, is. She became a princess, didn't she? Mm-hmm. I don't think people want uh, Nala dressed up as a <laughs> in like a gown she costume when they could have gown. when they could have Belle, Cinderella, Jasmine, uh, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, the one from Tangled. Oh, Tangled was Disney. Yeah, and then you've heard all the uh, the shit about the girl from Brave, right? Yeah, there's that big controversy because yeah. they made her look all skinnier. And so, what happened with that? Nervous, I, I guess. thought it was I thought it was silly to assume they were changing her design based on one promotional picture, but that doesn't mean that the points were invalid. So, Brave, the Brave girl was supposed to be fat, not fat, but she's not it's all super skinny and like, model skinny. She was a little more average sized, like okay, and yeah, she was a little thick. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong at all. They kind of tamed back her hair a little bit, too. She had this wild, frizzy hair, and they kind of tamed that back. They made her look more princessy and modely. and For the you movie? Know, she was supposed to be more relatable. No, for this promotional like thing where the, about inducting her into being a Disney okay, princess. Okay, yeah, I did, I did see that. Her hair was more straight like and done, you know, and yeah. then throughout, I thought, I was like, Throughout the movie, like her hair was like all like a mess. Well, that's what Disney said was like she was she was getting ready for a ceremony to induct her into being a Disney princess. Of course, she's gonna dress up and do all this, and it's like not helping. <laughs> she's not gonna helping. get all prim and proper. But anyway, back to the Little Mermaid. There's never been a live action Little Mermaid movie by anybody. No one's ever done it. The why why the Fifty Shades of Grey writer? Right? Isn't that a like, little? Weird? Would she have anything else under her belt? <laughs> And I wonder no how, pun many, intended. how many uh, phalluses is she going to slip into the background of this yeah, Little Mermaid? Yeah. The castle, it's a penis. <laughs> More than the original? <laughs> the preacher, he has a penis. <laughs> uh, but Wait. anyway, we know what you want to hear. You want to hear about the PlayStation 4 and the E3 and the, the Glaven. The E3 and the Glaven. Um, I stumbled across a little article that caught my interest when I was looking for, you know, looking for E3 stuff. Have you heard of the console, the Ouya? It's supposed to release this month. Yes, I think I have. It's an independent console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. And it has it's run with an Android processor. I had not heard of this thing, and I wouldn't have unless I had done this today. But I just thought it was so interesting because the creator, uh, Julie Ehrman, who's a designer, you know, I don't know, is an independent console, so it's not like it's not an affiliation with the Entertainment Software Association and the people that do the E3. Or anything oh, okay. like that. It's not like one of the big companies like Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo. Mm-hmm. So she didn't have like anything. The permits E3. or whatever. Yeah. So she rented space across the street at A3 to promote it herself. Oh, no way. Yeah. This pissed off the people at the e- ESA. They rented the spot right in front of her and parked semi trucks in front of it. Are you serious? Yeah. What fucking dicks? Yeah, exactly. Like, she's going to draw attention away from E3. Jesus Christ. That's fucking stupid. That, I'm like, I was like, oh, that's so... It that, gets like, better. No, it gets better. What she did with that is then she put banners up on the semi-trucks telling them to go past for the Ouya Expo itself. Awesome. In the spot. And that pissed off the ESA some more, and they called the cops. Okay. And the cops went and like made sure she had all the proper she had that spot rented out, you know, and she wasn't doing anything illegal or anything. And they're just like, "Oh, okay." And like they're still try the S A is still trying to get her to stop. Did they make her take the Mm-mm. banners down? Nope. Well, they weren't her trucks, right? Oh, I think they did. I mean, I'm not saying like fuck that bitch, take the banners down. I'm saying I'm totally on her side, but I would think that the cops would be like, "Well, you do got to take the banners down." I mean, they are being dicks, but they are their trucks. Oh, it just said, you know, it just said the cops left without taking any further action. Just that's, that's, that's like really saying petty of them. But really, fucking... that's ESA saying, um, you haven't paid us. You can't leech off of our our customers. Yeah, it's very petty of them, though. I say for as big as they are, yeah, Seriously. they they can let it go. Who knows? But I do want to I do want to talk about the Ouya a little bit. I watched an unboxing, and I got to say, this thing looks awesome. The price is a hundred dollars. I like it for a console. It almost seems like they're more like iPad app games. 
but they're so vast. Like the launch is going to have over 125 titles. Holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> like to have that already. And the, uh, what I've seen is like a lot of like puzzle action. Um, there's RPGs. Yeah, I was gonna say if we can get some good RPGs and platformers um, in there. And... Yeah, the big the big name they're launching with is Final Fantasy three. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so that's at least that right there is it would be a draw for a lot of people and. And on top of everything, every single game on there that you can choose to buy, because it's all, you know, you just download it through their web. All the games are free to try. They're all free demos. You could play nice. for every game before you buy it. And it just, like, seems like, you know, you could tell this system was made by gamers for gamers. There's this one game that looked really interesting to me called Saturday Morning RPG. Okay. And you're basically, you're a guy that's in an RPG that's in a world that basically revolves around Saturday Morning 80s cartoons. What? <laughs> yeah, like there's not He-Man parodies, okay, there's yes. Back to the Future parodies. That's, not the actual ones. That sounds amazing. And That's fucking cool. You were fight. There's another one where you're fighting this one person that looks like Evelyn from He-Man, and like you're choosing your items. Who was he? You know, which one was he? I was she, never... the oh. evil princess, okay. uh, Skeletor's yeah lady friend. Or See, whatever. I know like most of the characters because I had a bunch of the toys, but I never liked He-Man. Right. But still, of course, family members would. I'm a boy, so they, it's the 80s. They give uh, me a He-Man toy. They knew I liked monsters, and hey, there were some cool monsters. Did you watch the He-Man movie? No. That's an awful movie. Guilty um, pleasure of mine, but yeah, awful I've movie. Yeah, I've seen like, the Nostalgia Critic review right, it. Right. So. It's very bad. Courtney Cox, you know, can't, can't go wrong with that. <laughs> oh, God, Courtney Cox was in it? I forgot about Teenager that. Teenager Courtney Cox. Jeez. That's crazy. But, yeah. That, that's who I think when I think He-Man. So I think that's a really cool game to have on there, you know, on top of and it, there's the one thing I noticed that there's a huge lack of sports titles. Interesting. There's like only a couple soccer ones and but I watched this unboxing of this thing for people for backers on Kickstarter. Okay. And this dude got it and he and he pulled it out and I'm telling you right now the controller is bigger than the actual console. Oh yeah. It's like a little cube. Yeah, I've definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And the controller kind of looks like a 360 console or a controller. Cool. They uh, did you see? There's a new preview for the South Park game, which is encouraging to me because I'm really Ooh, looking forward to it. The, is that the Stick of Truth? Yes, I am so into that. <laughs> Wasn't it supposed to er- originally release this past March? Yes. Where are you on that? Hopefully, making it better. <laughs> um, it's because of the whole deal with uh with THQ going down and everything that fucked up the whole release of the game. Oh, so that's why it was delayed. More or less, its street date is twelve thirty one. Usually when a date says 1231, it's just a placeholder. Right, but, to have that out by the end of the year. But this one says it's a street date. Um, obviously, my biggest, like, the biggest thing for me was Pokemon. But I'd like to save that. We're going to do a whole episode about X and Y here sometime soon sometime, before it comes out. Sometime, I feel like. I'm um, not big on the Pika Moons, <laughs> or however you choose to say that. Pokemans, well, the big, as the big parents thing, would say. The big announcement, there's a new type. They haven't released a new type since the second generation of games. This is this, you mean like a water type, fire type, yeah, that was, sort of thing. Yeah, there was originally fifteen types, then they added two of them. Plant in type in the second gen. They added dark and steel, and they haven't added a new type since. And there's been this is the sixth generation that's coming up. Huh. So yeah, it's a big deal. It's fairy type is what they added. Ooh, definitely wasn't expecting that. There was a lot of fan you can trap speculation fairies. about it, and it was true. True blood style. But we'll we'll come back to that. Save that. I for guess a later the other time. thing that interested me too was the new Smash Brothers, which they've been talking about for a while. It was cool to finally see something. I guess Villager from uh, from Animal Crossing is going to be in it. But the big news is fucking Mega Man, fucking Mega Man in Smash Brothers. Finally. Oh my god. It's about damn time. Fucking awesome. And uh, I guess that makes up for him not being in MVC three. Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I got it. <laughs> yeah, because it's like letters. You can do that with anything. Is that an acronym? So Mega Man is finally going to be in the game. People have been waiting for a long, yeah. long time. Now that they're not just exclusively Nintendo characters, you got Solid Snake, you got Sonic. Might as well. I'm sorry, Craig. Yeah. Xbox has got to go out behind the shed. I'll let you do it. It's your it's your system. <laughs> I I just... I've loved my 360 for so much, so long. I don't, I don't know what to do. I feel like I have to. Maybe I'll just stick it in both their faces and get an ouya. Can't play all the mainstream games I want you on that. Sticking anything in my face to get an ouya. I've never liked Xbox, and uh, I've always been more of a PlayStation fan. I'm clearly a Nintendo fanboy, but I think PlayStation has the superior system. 
And yeah, looks like they really proved it with this fucking conference. Time to take Xbox and Microsoft, put them out of their misery <laughs> once and for all. So what do we got? The hard drive is going to be upgradable. That's cool. Okay. They're going to open right on day one with video unlimited and music unlimited, which I guess is like their own Netflix and Spotify, respectively. Sounds okay. Sounds normal. And they'll still have like Netflix. Do they have too, cable TV? So. Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, see, point, they're less they're point. less on that whole big thing like Xbox, where Xbox is like we're everything. They're like we're still what we were, but we're stepping up the game, oh, and that's cool with me. Can't watch my cable TV on my on my game gaming console. It doesn't ever need to connect to the internet, ever. You can, but how will it know when you're playing games? <laughs> It, it, that's awesome because fuck only catering towards people who have internet. A lot of a lot of low income people like video games and they might not have internet. Me personally, I just got live two years ago and that's been out forever. You know, Craig, I didn't have it live. this whole time. I still, yeah, and to think that you know if you don't want to pay, especially you still have to have the live membership. Yeah, for Xbox. So if you don't want to pay the sixty bucks a year or thirty something on Amazon dot com, <laughs> shameless plug. For Amazon. <laughs> you are shit out of luck. SOL, motherfucker. I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense. You're alienating people. I don't know, man. I am so mad. Continue. Let's just keep yeah. talking about PlayStation 4. I might break out down the road. I can't guarantee you that I will, I'll keep it cool, but go ahead. You might what? Oh, bash Xbox some more. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, no. That's cool. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm I trying to know, contain man. it yeah, all. I don't but... like Xbox. To me... In my eyes, it's like, okay, Wii is like the kids' system, you know, the, the friendly, family-friendly system. Xbox, Definitely. Xbox is the teenager system. PlayStation is the adult system. Uh, and I think Nintendo has the best franchises. I love Mario. I love Pokemon. I love Legend of Zelda. I love all their, their series. And those always are the best games that I like to play more than any of these other ones. And I see, having worked in a video game store, like... Xbox is all trade-ins, constantly rotating their games, get a game, get a first-person shooter, beat it, get a new one, right. get a fighting game, beat it, get a new one, get That's a racing true. game, get a sports game, beat it, get a new one, and PlayStation I've games been are more with like, Madden this past is an three awesome years. game that I really like, that I want to buy and have and keep. And maybe play again someday. I don't know, and I'm just generalizing. I'm There's not saying, still a lot of I'm not uh, saying used like, PlayStation games, though, right? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. And I'm not saying teenagers don't use PlayStation. I'm not saying if you use Xbox, you got a teenage mentality. No, 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 by no means. I'm making broad generalizations. I can understand people that only play, like, the Call of Duty, Madden games, and like to play it <laughs> online, why you would have a PlayStation over a Xbox. Because then you wouldn't have to pay for online. Whereas in Xbox, yeah, you have to have the Netflix account, you have to pay for... And personally, I like having an Xbox Live membership. I really don't mind paying the whatever amount of money a year it is. It's not that difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. The point system kind of annoys me. I just, but it almost feels like it's safer. You're with the membership you're paying, but maybe that's just a false security. I mean, there's still a PlayStation Network, too, that you can be a member of. Well, yeah, but PlayStation's been hacked a few times. True. Xbox hasn't. That's true. That's that's the one thing that it seems like anybody that likes Xbox has. Yeah. That they say when I'm like, I don't know, I like, yeah, well, I like not getting hacked. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> I have nothing to say against that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, what can I say? I don't know if that's if that's what your major concern is. Then yeah, go with Xbox. I I can't argue with that. I don't I don't mean that in like a but, snooty way. I just like honestly, to me, I don't know, the PlayStation is just to me the superior system and I will grant them one thing that they have that's inferior to the Xbox. Like you're allowed to not be better than your opponent in every single possible conceivable way. And I am starting to <laughs> give in and say yes, the PlayStation is better. Like, Did you see the instructional video about how to share your games with friends on the PS4? Oh my god, they're even allowing that. It's pretty cool. Like they actually in the um in the commercial they go through it step by step. Like everything you have to do in order to share a game with a friend. Okay. Um so it's like step one and then you see these two guys standing there and one guy hands the video game to the other guy, and the other guy gives a thumbs up and says, Thanks <laughs> and then it's like the end. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Um I was trying to listen to you, but the only thing that was going through my eyeballs were Fury for Xbox. Oh. Um, I will have to listen to the podcast to figure out what that was. But it's <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I was actually talking about that right before the PlayStation conference. I was at work talking with a coworker about this, and I was like, how brilliant would it be? 
when these rumors first came out about not being able to use pre-owned games, it was a PlayStation rumor. The rumor was that PlayStation was not going to allow you to use pre-owned games on the yeah. new system. Xbox came along and announced that you weren't able to use pre-owned games on their system. How brilliant would it be if PlayStation spread those rumors to on get purpose. Xbox on board so that they could be like, hey guys, you can use pre-owned games on our system. <laughs> oh my god, you sneaky bastards. So Corporates. yeah, it's also of course going to be cheaper than the Xbox One by a hundred dollars or so. Yeah, Mainly which I because it doesn't believe. have the Xbox One has the Connect Two built into it. So maybe that hundred dollar difference. Why did they call that the Connect One? Could be the stupid Connect. At yeah. least the PlayStation, you know, well, I fucking, think gave up on the move. But like the Connect, like the new Connect reads your heartbeat. That's expensive fucking hardware. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> like so with the PlayStation, they they are going to have the PlayStation Eye. But it's sold separately for. Can you imagine bucks. if your Connect had like an AI voice, You're like I am watching you always, even when I am off. You cannot turn me off. I would not like if it said that. I wouldn't <laughs> mind it having a voice, but if it said shit like that, no way, dude. I am not on board. Nathan, we will always be friends, the best of friends. Would that creep you out, that. or because that's like my biggest fear? Would that you're asking me? <laughs> If a video game system started talking to me, addressing me by name, and acting very creepy and possessive, and telling me it watches me when it's turned off, would I be creeped out? No. Not at all. I've read scary stories to tell in the dark. Okay, good. So you know it's just, you know... Nothing creeps me out. My nerves are (laughs) steeled. I mean, it's just a whole new sort of creepy to me. I just... I, I don't trust anything that doesn't, like, turn off. You know what I fucking hate? Just to go on a little side route here real quick. When a machine says it's sorry like when i when i'm calling a a hotline and i have to press numbers and shit and it's like i'm sorry something 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 and i'm like no 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 no. don't patronize me don't tell me you're sorry you expect me to believe that the one machine that has achieved human level capacity for emotion is stuck working a teleservice job no 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 you're not buying the the line with a human you fucking goddamn bag of gears (laughs) What was that? I didn't hear that. You didn't hear that because you don't have ears, Johnny Five. Let me talk to a human. Anyway. I feel bad now for that little poor robot operator. What if it was and I just broke his heart? Error, error, then exploded. Um, I guess you can also uh, stream games to your Vita. So it's got Okay, I almost forgot about the Vita. Yeah, and they're bringing it back by making it like the Wii U if you have a Vita. Right. Interesting. That they seems beneficial. The, the two big games that everybody's ranting and raging about, fucking Final Fantasy 15 and Kingdom Hearts 3. It's oh. about goddamn time Kingdom Hearts 3 came out. So, yeah, I think I'm going to be getting a PlayStation. I, I'm skeptical. I haven't seen the Final Fantasy 15 trailer. Uh, I've been disinterested in Final Fantasy for a long time. It's. I feel like it just hasn't been a quality game and just gotten away from what it's supposed to be. I don't have time if for that everybody, shit, so I haven't played one in years. But yeah, if everybody you know upbeat about it and optimistic, I will take them for their word and say, okay, let's see this. Kingdom Hearts three is a little more interesting to me. I'm uh, very interested in that. Did you ever play any of the Kingdom Hearts games? I have not. They're pretty cool. I heard they were really good. I I don't think it's going to happen, but I think it would be awesome if we introduced Marvel and Star Wars into this, but they would probably just tip the scales. Oh, into the Kingdom Hearts universe? Yeah. Fuck yeah, it. by Disney now. Studio Ghibli in there, too. Some fucking Hayao Miyazaki movies. <laughs> Disney owns the American rights to that. Get Howell in there. Howell would probably fit in. I don't know about anything else. Yeah, I'm just I'm just ranting. I don't really think that they should. But Marvel and Star Wars, Side that might characters. be pretty interesting. Yeah, it doesn't have to be overdone. Like Cloud appears in it, and it's not like they're fucking. That it's not like that means everything from Final Fantasy has to be in it. You know, right? I have recently gotten interested in the Kingdom Hearts series, but I really don't have anything to play it on because I've never been a PlayStation guy. So, hmm. but it's not on knows? Xbox. Yeah, no. maybe PS4. Finally jumping on board. Good for you, Craig. Abandoned ship! (laughs) I'm glad they won you over. Just the facts. 
Chuck Klosterman is an American author of eight books, two novels, three essay collections, and three nonfiction narratives. He is best known for his musings on popular culture, sports, and rock and roll, and has written for Spin, Esquire, GQ, The Washington Post, and The New York Times Magazine. He's a pretty cool dude. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. I've read, you know, some things from him. Uh, it seems to me like he's just kind of penning his thoughts. You know, I've read essays, mm-hmm. but and that's what it seems like to me. Uh, there's a few I could recall. But, you know, he definitely has interesting views. I frequently disagree with this man. Yeah, me too. I uh, I have no interest in sports, and he writes about them all the time, and yet I can still read what he writes about sports because it's interesting. And when he's when he's talking about music, and I'm like, fuck you, your favorite band is Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> but I can still love it and appreciate it. And, like, I, I love uh, – he's one of my favorite writers. Yeah, I know you said he writes about sports, and I read one that he did about football, and I was just like, huh. Like, he basically compared – the NFL to Marxism. Okay. Yeah. Like with a shared that, revenue thing. And I was just like, that is a very well made point. Okay. Never thought of it that way. <laughs> he has one where he compares basketball to socialism. So that's, yeah. You know, these are just the thoughts that are running through your head when you're, when you're watching games. Oh, I love that though. <laughs> like thinking of like to read like stuff about pop culture that's generally looked at as like meaningless or pointless right. pop culture, but like looking at it through this deeper lens. And like, I, I think that's super interesting. Yeah. Definitely. You know, something I never knew until I was preparing for this episode. He, he did uh shorts with Carl from Aqua Teen. Really? Yeah. Carl had like a series where he was like reviewing stuff from the NFL. Yeah. And for the first three episodes. I watched those. those yeah, the rants. first three episodes had Chuck, had Chuck Klosterman in them. And then after the third episode, he wasn't there anymore. But, as uh, Chuck Klosterman? Yeah, as himself. Like he was, it was a cartoon version of him. Looked just like him though. And he did his voice. And I kind of want to watch them again now. <laughs> yeah, I know they're I on Adult one Swim. Of them. Yeah, they're on YouTube. I watched one of them. And I was like, no way. What happened to Carl's voice though? Was someone else doing his voice? I don't know. It's way different. I was like, what the fuck? It wouldn't surprise me because they keep changing their name. I know that. Whose name? Oh, the name of the show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this funny. new season that's coming out is just called Aqua. Yeah, I saw that. That's funny. That's Last funny. season was Aqua Team Unit Patrol or something like that. It's so ridiculous. He's pretty cool. Like, What else have you read by him? I read one about him comparing his life to his Sim character's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that, that was one a very vividly. interesting one, and I just love the like the intro, like the first line and the whole thing is, "I am not a benevolent god," <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and I'm just like, "Okay, this is where this is headed already." Yes, it's so fucked up. Oh, I love it. And that was written back like yeah, you know, in the nineties, ten years ago or so, when The Sims first came out. Yeah, late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, probably early two thousands. Year two thousand, two thousand one. And it was just, it was interesting. Uh, Funny how he was able to get online and talk on the phone with like the creator. Oh yeah, about it, and that was what what was interesting because you know he made the point that the Sims game is based on the basic of the basics of the game is all like materialistic stuff. And yeah, have, like that's the meaning of life is materialism and stuff. And he talked to the guy and he he basically said that materialism is the red herring of the game because that, that stuff eventually will break down and you it won't ultimately make you happy. Mm-hmm. And you got to f- learn that through playing. And that's, I thought that was, I was like, wow. I was never really one to that's play cool. The Sims personally. I don't know. I have my own life. I don't want to watch my <laughs> life. <laughs> well, you know what I always found fun is making the characters, but I'd never actually played the game. That's just like, I've done the same thing for Dungeons and Dragons. Never played a game of Dungeons and Dragons in my life. I've made a bunch of characters. But you're a for level it, one uh, battle mage, right? <laughs> I've just made a bunch of characters. Making characters is and fun And a druid elf. Same thing for DC Universe Online. I made a character and never played the game. Oh, really? Yeah, I like making you, characters. Did you buy the game? No, it's free. Oh, it is? Yeah. I, um, you I don't can think it buy was it. When, it you get, when you first... You get more if you oh, okay. buy it. You can do more shit. And, There's like, just like kind of like free to play type. And like stuff like that. Sign on, made a character. You're like, I'm a superhero. All right, uh, good night. <laughs> I'm a villain. All right, good night. I was <laughs> bored. <laughs> Well, no, I, just, I love customizable villain. character creating stuff. The Sims is cool. There's even like programs you can download where you can make your own clothing, like the designs for the clothing and stuff, and like you know put your own in images the Sims? and stuff. It's like a, no, it's like hack programs you can download, and then you can upload that game ah. actually into the Sims, like or the clothing you make into the Sims. You can like hack it into there. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Interesting point about the Sims. 
is how he's talking about still with the materialistic things, his character, you know, need like an expensive bed. And I'm glad you said that you don't, you disagree with him a lot because there was one thing he said and I was just like, what? That he doesn't own a mattress? Yeah, that he doesn't own a bed. He's just like, I'm just picturing like a bunch of like sheets and stuff just laid down in the corner of his room. And he's like, well, when you're asleep, what does it matter what you're sleeping? I'm like, I don't know, comfort to get to sleep in the first place. I mean, um, I can understand if he was like, yeah, I have a couch that I sleep on, even. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting to me. Like, yeah. My back would not be able to handle it. My back would be so screwed. But, okay. <laughs> so, basically, what we're going to do here is we've got two of Chuck Klosterman's books in front of us. We've actually got three of them, but one of them we won't be using. Basically, in uh, Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs by Chuck Klosterman. Interesting title, by the way. It was originally going to be called something else, but I don't remember what. And uh, it's actually his best-selling book. In that book, there's one, I guess you'd call it an essay, where he says, the 23 questions I ask everybody I meet in order to decide if I can really love them. And he lists 23 questions. Okay. And then in Chuck Klosterman 4, which is another essay collection, uh, near the end of the book, every essay is prefaced with a question. And these are all sort of thought experiment, conversation starters... They're interesting. Some of them are very interesting. Some of them are weird. But we're basically going to pick questions at random and muse. Muse about them? Yes. What's interesting is the 23 questions that he asks if he could actually love someone when he meets them. In one of his essays I read, where he's talking about how he's emo, he was saying how like he could never really love anyone because he's looking for that movie love. Oh, I loved that one where he talks about say anything, right? Yeah. The movie, not the emo band. I feel some resentment in there. No, I'm just saying. Which is funny because you named them an emo band, and I think the title of the essay is This is Emo, or something to do with being emo. I'm oh, yeah, sure. it was. Yeah, it was. You're right. Because that whole book is set up like a mixtape. Yep. The page numbers are like their running time. I guess we'll just get right into this. Get into these questions, huh? I'm interested. I have no prior knowledge of these questions myself. And I haven't read them in a few years. Uh, I haven't reread them to prepare, and I'm not going to pick specific ones. We'll both go at random back and forth. Craig. Yes. For whatever reason, two unauthorized movies are made about your life. The first is an independently released documentary, primarily comprised of interviews with people who know you and bootleg footage from your actual life. Critics are describing the documentary as brutally honest and relentlessly fair. Meanwhile, Columbia TriStar has produced a big-budget biopic of your life, casting major Hollywood stars as you and all your acquaintances. Though the movie is based on actual events, screenwriters have taken some liberties with the facts. Critics are split on the artistic merits of this fictionalized account, but audiences love it. Which film would you be most interested in seeing? Which film would I be most interested in seeing? First thing I would ask is, why do you think my life is this glorious? to actually make a film about it. <laughs> well, it's, that's the point. It's a thought experiment. Okay. That's like saying, well, why would somebody be holding a gun to my head and asking me which ice cream I want? I got to say, I probably wouldn't like the big budget one. I would also want to be at least paid for royalties by somebody in either situation. Well, you probably would be. I'd probably be more interested in seeing the big budget one to see how far they went with the liberties in stretching the truth and of my life. the documentary one might damage Be a little you. sad. Yeah, it might. well, it might... <laughs> Really be hard to watch. Who knows? It's right. brutally honest. Reliving childhood dramas, repressed memories. I don't know how they got that found footage of me in the basement when I was a kid making video movies. Did Ashton Kutcher show up in a time portal and save you? <laughs> to, to be fair, I think Ashton Kutcher is like the Hitler thing. As soon as you get to Ashton Kutcher, <laughs> it's <conversation's> over. The conversation's <laughs> over. Once the conversation reaches Kutcher. We've had Kutcher levels reached. Time to move on. Nathan, defying all expectation, a group of Scottish marine biologists capture a live Loch Ness monster. In an almost unbelievable coincidence, a bear hunter in the Pacific Northwest shoots a Sasquatch in the thigh, thereby allowing zoologists the, to take the furry monster into captivity. These events happen on the same afternoon. That evening, the president announces he may have thyroid cancer and will undergo a biopsy later that week. You are the front page editor of the New York Times. What do you play as the biggest story? Oh, man. That would be amazing. First of all, 
I don't understand why as the front page editor, I can't be like Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot both found in same week. That to me is a story. <laughs> now, I know I can't group the president thing into that. Obviously <laughs> I'm going to say right now it's not the president. <laughs> the president's getting the shaft for the front page there, <laughs> but like, mm-hmm. come on, I'm the editor. What, what, what sensible editor wouldn't be like, Holy shit. Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot both real. Huh? Every other newspaper is going to be printing that. Why, why, why do I have to pick one or the other? Uh, maybe just go with which one you like the most. Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot? Okay, we'll see here. I kind of like Bigfoot more. The Loch Ness Monster is way less likely. That would be a bigger shock. A fucking dinosaur is living in this lake in Scotland. Right, instead of a gigantic humanoid beast thing. But that's a huge deal, too. That's right. the missing link. Hmm. Out of respect to Bigfoot, I would print Bigfoot. <laughs> Out of respect to Bigfoot. Yes. Loch Ness Monster would go to page two, and <laughs> the president's really? cancer will move to page seven in the bottom corner. <laughs> in the local section <laughs> of the Washington, D.C. In the home and garden section. <laughs> yes. Help, I've got thyroid cancer. <laughs> Maybe what do in, I do, Martha? In the opinions section. <laughs> Dear Martha. Oh, that was, that was fun. So you would go with Bigfoot. My opinion is that the president has thyroid cancer. <laughs> Yeah, if I had to choose one out of those three, I'd go with Bigfoot. But uh, honestly, dude, come on. Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, both discovered in the same week. WTF? <laughs> exclamation point, question mark, question mark, <laughs> exclamation point, exclamation point, question mark. Period. <laughs> Semicolon. Now we're just... We're what's, just that? What's, what's that? We're punctuation maniacs. Ampersand. <laughs> Craig, you are placed in the unenviable position of having to compete for the right to stay alive. You will be matched against a person of your own gender in a series of five events. An 800-meter run, a game of Scrabble, a three-round boxing match, a debate over the legalization of late-term abortion, scored and officiated by reputable collegiate judges, and the math portion of the SAT. In order to survive, you must win at least three of these events. Your opponent will be playing for his or her life as well. However, you kind of get to pick your opponent. You can either A compete against the person selected at random, or B, you can compete against someone who is exactly like you. If selected at random, the individual could be of any age or skill level. He or she might be an infant with Down syndrome, but he or she might also be an academic, all-American linebacker from Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Whatever. If you pick the average human, he or she will be precisely your age and will have an identical level of education, and the person will be a perfect cross-section of your particular demographic. He or she will be of average height and of average weight with a standard IQ and the most normative life experience imaginable. So whom do you select? Or perhaps more accurately, do you feel that you are better than an average version of yourself? Yes. I would pick the average version of myself, hands down. I don't want to accidentally go against an academic scholar, and I also don't want to be the guy known to have killing an autistic child. So you're going to go against... I feel like I'm better than the average me. The average person of your exact like type of upbringing and background and all that. Yeah, I am. All right. That, did, that, <laughs> did that sound pretentious at all or anything? I don't think so because I feel like I'm much smarter than all my dumb friends and much dumber than all my smart friends. <laughs> so I don't know. Okay. Nathan. A novel titled Interior Mirror is released to mammoth commercial success, despite middling reviews. However, a curious social trend emerges. Though no one can prove a direct scientific link, it appears that almost 30% of the people who read this book immediately become homosexual. Many of these newfound homosexuals credit the book for helping them reach this conclusion about their orientation, despite the fact that Interior Mirror is ostensibly a crime novel with no homoerotic content and was written by a straight man. Would this phenomenon increase or decrease the likelihood of you reading the book? Oh, man, that's crazy. Uh, I, don't know I did not know that that was going to go that down that route. I, uh, it, would, it would make me a lot more interested in the book. It would probably make me more likely because I've, I'm too confident in my own. Because you're hoping like, to be gay? No, day. I'm too confident in my own, for one, mental strength and like familiarity. That nothing can sway your opinion one way or the other? For one, that I know myself. And well enough. That, and that, yeah, I mean, I've always been pretty confident that it's not easy to brainwash or hypnotize me. 
Like, I don't know. I would be super interested. I'd be like, what the fuck? You'd want to know, understand what's going on in it. That would make maybe make people like, hmm, I know that's not going to happen to me. I would also be interested in what, what these people that say, I said, what, what? In, in the but, butt. Um, <laughs> these do people it in would butt, say, in my butt. they say, uh, that the book turned them gay. Well, don't they say anything else? Don't these interviewers and reporters ask them, what about this book helped you realize? Right. That's what I want to know. Yeah. What aspect of this crime novel made you realize, hey, that's something. Did it turn, would it turn Bigfoot gay? I don't know. What about steampunk Morgan Freeman? It's a good chance. Would it turn Bigfoot and steampunk Morgan Freeman gay for each other? Hmm. I think that's a whole different subject. Well, maybe it's because Morgan Freeman is more man than man. And Bigfoot is an entire species. Why do you think there's not that many Bigfoot? Because they haven't read this book, apparently. No, apparently they have. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lots of Bigfoots. <laughs> would that be the proper plural? Bigfoots? No. Big feet? Um, no, I think it would just be Bigfoot. Oh, okay, like moose. I don't like that. Big feet? Hell no. That sounds <laughs> stupid as shit. I saw two big feet out in them there woods. Like, I saw a moose, and I saw two moose. Yes. Okay, yeah, I don't think it would really change my perception on the book at all either. Um, I probably wouldn't want to read it mostly because I don't really like crime dramas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm also like, this book has to like intrigue me enough to actually get me As to read it. As a book on it. its would, own. That yeah. would definitely make me more interested in it. So I guess I could say, yeah, it would make me more likely to read it if I'm more interested in it. Obviously, you're more likely to read something you're more interested in. Right. Craig, you meet a wizard in downtown Chicago. The wizard tells you he can make you more attractive if you pay him money. When you ask how this process works, the wizard points to a random person on the street. You look at this random stranger. The wizard says, I will now make them a dollar more attractive. He waves his magic wand. Ostensibly, this person does not change at all. As far as you can tell, nothing is different. But somehow, this person is suddenly a little more appealing. The tangible difference is invisible to the naked eye, but you can't deny that this person is vaguely sexier. This wizard has a weird rule, though. You can only pay him once. You can't keep giving him money until you're satisfied. You can only pay him one lump sum up front. How much cash do you give this wizard? Hmm. I guess at the time, it would depend on how much was in my wallet. Hey, <laughs> right. How much cash do I have? One lump sum. I don't so know. So I guess we'll just say with whatever you have now. I think I'd be good with or 20 bucks. Or the average. You have the average of what you've made and what you've had at any given time in the last five years or something. I'm I, here I am like making amendments to Chuck Klosterman's questions. Okay, let's say I have $100 in my pocket. Okay. I give him about 25 30 bucks, maybe. Okay. I'm okay with that. Well, I mean, what if you had your ATM card and there's an ATM right there? I'm good with 25 30 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? And maybe it'll just be, you know, even if it's a slight change facially, I'm okay with it. <laughs> like, whatever, it helps. I don't know, man. I might be like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I might as well give this dude a good fucking sum of cash. I can, I can drop some money on some stupid shit sometimes. I am going to just give you my PIN number. You take any out, amount out that you want. Well, I mean... How much money do you want? What was the most <laughs> expensive piece of clothing you've bought in the last couple of years? In the last couple of years? Yeah. Most expensive? Yeah. 50 bucks. Why'd you buy that? It's a jersey. Why'd you buy it? Because I like the 49ers. I like to wrap my sports In a way, team. you bought it to look more attractive. Stop dodging the fucking question. <laughs> actually, <laughs> you know? actually, I think that the jersey kind of makes me look less attractive. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. And then something about that was attractive to you. Yeah. That you wanted to be attractive. You don't buy shit to look bad. <laughs> I <laughs> no. feel like $20, $30 is like a couple t-shirts. And I've, I've definitely dropped more on a nice jacket or a nice pair of jeans. I could I could drop more on the ability well, to com you're gonna... be completely more attractive by a wizard. Is it steampunk Morgan Freeman wizard? No, no. no. It's futuristic it's Val the Kilmer Elemist. wizard. It's the Elemist. I'm like, what the fuck, man? You're a dick. How do I change the future? Look, do you want to be more attractive or not? Ah, fine. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, but how much would I pay? I would. I would probably. I don't know, man. I think I'd have to at least just drop a hundred. I don't know if I'd go over a hundred. But if that was a dollar, well, that's a lot, though. If a dollar made them noticeably more, well. Not know. noticeably, but under, the, like, there is something. Maybe he doesn't make you more attractive at all, and he really just makes, like, a charm spell to make people more interested in you. That's not what the deal was, sir. I know it's not what the deal was, but how often do you, can you say, yes, I wholly trust this wizard. I randomly see on the street. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't be a shifty fuck. <laughs> well, if it's steam, steampunk Morgan Freeman, you're damn right I trust him. I don't trust a man with tiny glasses. Nathan, every person you have ever slept with is invited to a banquet where you are the guest of honor. 
No one will be in attendance except for you. Oh, Jesus. The collection of your former lovers and the catering service. After the meal, you are asked to give a 15-minute speech to the assembly. 15 or yeah. 50? 15. Okay. What do you talk about? <laughs> um, That's a really weird one. I know. I'm sorry. Um, No, I don't know. What do I talk about? It's all, everyone I've ever had sex with. I don't know. I don't... I would just try to think of what I would talk about if it was any other type of convention and talk about that. <laughs> talk about... Oh, so we're just going to talk about, you know, the fact that all of you slept with me. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Enjoying the, enjoying the food? Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you asked me this question and I didn't ask you that question. Or else it'd just be Craig giving a speech to a bunch of caterers. Oh! Zing. Zing. No, honestly. Right in the heart. I think uh, my speech would include everything I just said before. Just asking people if they want to go again. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I guess so. Why not? Bullshit. Bullshit. Like, this is awkward. That. But you would not. Okay, maybe I wouldn't. <laughs> there's no way no. you would. Well, I mean, it's not like there's. If you're not going to take these questions seriously, Craig, why are we even here? <laughs> I'm not sure if that was a serious question to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> Craig. You are given the chance to control what your legacy will be. You can't specifically dictate how you will be recalled by future generations, but you are given the chance to choose between two general idioms of legacies. The first kind of legacy, option A, would be that you lived your days as a good, honest person who worked hard and contributed to society. However, the limitation of this legacy will be that almost no one will know or remember this information, including future members of your own extended family. Most average people will never even know you lived. The second kind of legacy, option B, will be familiar to almost everyone in the world for centuries to come. However, this legacy will be extremely strange and neutral. It will be an obscure fact that has almost nothing to do with your tangible day-to-day -day life. The best comparison being the legacy of General So Sung Tang, an extremely gifted and successful military leader during the 17th century Qing Dynasty, who is now exclusively remembered as the namesake for the popular Chinese dish, General So's Chicken. Which legacy do you want? I think I'd be content with just being a good person. You don't want to be General Craig's chicken? No, I don't want food named after me. I'm good with that. <laughs> just something like random, you know, like maybe I'll be the mascot of a mattress store. <laughs> I'm crazy, Craig. I'm just giving these mattresses away. Hey, Chuck, <laughs> get your ass down here. We got mattresses for you. No, um, yeah, I'm better off being a good person, I think. That's kind of the legacy I would leave in real life anyways. I try to be a good guy, but... I don't think anybody really remember me outside friends and family. For reasons that cannot be explained, cats can subtly read at a 12th grade level. They can't talk I like this. And they can't write, but they can read silently and understand the text. Many cats love this new skill because they now have something to do all day while they lay around the house. However, a few cats become depressed because reading forces them to realize the limitations of their existence. Not to mention the utter frustration of being able to express themselves. Maybe that should say not being able to express themselves. Oh, being unable. Okay. This being the case, do you think the average cat would enjoy Garfield? Or would cats find this cartoon to be an insulting caricature? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so glad I picked that one. That's fun. No, I don't think the average cat would enjoy Garfield. Because Garfield sucks. But he hates Mondays and loves lasagna. <laughs> Garfield hasn't been funny since the fucking animated series. Garfield's also kind of a dick. So I mean, know, and so and mean to the dog. It's like the cats would would they find it offensive? Stereotypical. Yeah, like they're yeah, saying probably. he's saying that cats are jerks and fat and lazy. Yeah, they probably would. However, I do agree with that. I agree with that you. The cats are jerks and fat and lazy. <laughs> or, oh, you agree with okay that they would be insulted, but nobody would ever know it because they can't express themselves. <laughs> They would still just be the average cat. I think we can make a cat keyboard. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Not that kind of keyboard. <laughs> At long last, someone invents the Dream VCR. This machine allows you to tape an entire evening's worth of your own dreams, which you can then watch at your leisure. However, the inventor of the Dream VCR will only allow you to use this device if you agree to a strange caveat. When you do watch your dreams, you must do so with your family and your closest friends in the same room. They get to watch your dreams along with you. And if you don't agree to this, you can't use the Dream VCR. Would you still do this? Not fair. I would not do that. I no. don't want 
No, because I remember some dreams and they're pretty twisted, and I don't want other people knowing about them. <laughs> <laughs> I totally would. And Fuck it. No, no, I don't think my dreams are innocent enough. I'd be, there would be a lot of it would be embarrassing stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, a but lot of me, it. I mean, they're dreams. That means that's what's on my mind. Yeah, but not necessarily <laughs> always. You know what I mean? Like, and things on your mind don't necessarily mean. But I would be so interested in seeing it, being able to watch it at my leisure. When you first said the Dream VCR, where you can record an evening. And I was just like, oh, we already have that. It's called the DVR for the time warrant. Oh, no, about dreams. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought, you know, like, this is the dream VCR. <laughs> <We're>, we've, <laughs> we've evolved beyond VCRs, sir. <laughs> um, um, no, I don't think I would do it. I think I would forsake it and just hope I can remember them. I honestly don't have a lot of sex dreams. I've had very, very few in my life. I'm not worried about that. Uh, and, like, I'm not really worried about the sex dreams either because they're few and far between. But at least in my memory, you know, but other dreams, I don't know. It was just weird. Although I think it'd be cool to actually see on, on video, that dream with your teeth falling out. Oh, God. maybe scary. I don't I know. I want to watch that. <laughs> yeah. Like see, like, well, you wouldn't want to relive like bad dreams, you know, No bad dreams. Yeah. But not that one. I like nightmares are some of the most interesting ones, but that dream of the teeth falling out. Oh my God. No, I hate that. Yeah. Me too. That's the worst dream ever. Like, I don't understand. Like, God was in a bad mood when he invented that dream. <laughs> okay, Nathan. Craig. Hello. Hey, what's going on, dude? No, not too much. You know, just reading some questions. From what? Um, Chuck Klosterman book. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So, anyways, I have a question for you. Imagine you could go back to the age of five and relive the rest of your life, knowing everything that you know now. Oh, you don't have to, I'm way ahead of you there. <laughs> I've, uh, I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> not actually done it but in your mind you it. have no i've yeah. act no craig that's why i'm so smart <laughs> i actually went back to the age of five knowing everything and then what you just you already did that yeah i lived oh. through it I, and then I, and then when i get bored i go back and do it again no no what i meant was i've imagined it plenty of times <laughs> okay you will re-experience your entire adolescence with both the cognitive ability of an adult and the memories of everything you've learned from having lived your pre- your life previously. Fucking awesome. I'm kind of scared to hear what the catch is. Would you lose your virginity earlier or later than you did the first time around, and by how many years? I don't know. I don't think I'd do either. I think I lost my virginity at a pretty good time. I wore a condom. I was responsible. Well, that's good to hear, sir, that you were responsible. So. Yeah. So you're not saying you know, knowing what you knew, you wouldn't say. No, I honestly don't think I would. I think I was. I think I did a pretty good job on that front. Well, yeah. If, I don't know. I think I think I made responsible decisions. That's good to know. Yeah, I'm glad I got to get the have the experience when I was young, but not too young, and responsibly. Craig. Genetic engineers at Johns Hopkins University announced that they have developed a so-called super gorilla. Though awesome. The, right? Though the animal cannot speak, it has a sign language lexicon of over 12,000 words, an IQ of almost 85, and, most notably, a vague sense of self-awareness. Oddly, the creature, who weighs 700 pounds, becomes fascinated by football. The gorilla aspires to play the game at its highest level and quickly develops the rudimentary skills of a defensive end. ESPN analysis Tom Jackson speculates that this gorilla would be borderline unblockable and would likely average six sacks a game, although Jackson concedes that the beast might be susceptible to counters and misdirection plays. Meanwhile, the gorilla has made it clear he would never intentionally injure an opponent. You are the commissioner of the NFL. Would you allow this gorilla to sign with the Oakland Raiders? He's made it clear that he would never intentionally... Like, how can you... Can you trust a gorilla? You know, like, are they good for their word? I think that's what he's asking. Can you trust a gorilla? Well, even with that out of the way, it's just yeah, they're there's not, more to it than a, just there's not a human. They're not human. So regardless of their mental capacity, you know, and, there's, and their skill set, um, their strength is unrivaled. So it's like it would be unfair to the rest of the sport. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, you physically can't block the man because there's no way you could possibly achieve, you know, at least with human on human. You know, there are stronger people than others, but if you really wanted to, you could achieve the same strength. You just have to work a lot harder. As a gorilla? At it. No, as another human. Oh, okay. You know, but as a gorilla, you can never match that. You know, they're yeah. They're gorillas. Their weakest, weak gorillas are stronger than, like, most, almost every human in, in the NFL. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I mean, would a responsible commissioner of the NFL uh, allow this gorilla to play? No. Would I? Shit, Yes. 
You would? If I was the commissioner of the NFL, I'd be like, how the fuck did – who the fuck gave me this job? You, you assholes don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're doing. Fuck yeah, a gorilla can play. I'd be like, no. Fuck, get some regular gorillas in there too. This is going to be fun <laughs> as shit. See, at that point, you just have to use your brain and market a new – a new brand. Now what if you're now what if you were the commissioner of the XFL? <laughs> Shit, I'd hire a rhinoceros. <laughs> so you wouldn't let the gorilla play. I totally would. I mean, if nothing else, out of spite for whoever gave me the job <laughs> as NFL commissioner. <laughs> Just but, as uh, a big fuck you. But like, oh my god, I don't yes, like I would for an excuse to see a gorilla fucking play football. I would watch football suddenly. You work in an office. Generally you are popular with your coworkers. However, you discover that there are currently two rumors circulating in the office gossip mill, and both involve you. The first rumor is that you got drunk at an office holiday party and had sex with one of your married coworkers. This rumor is completely true, but most people don't believe it. The second rumor is that you've been stealing hundreds of dollars of office supplies and then selling them to, a co- to cover a gambling debt. This rumor is completely false, but virtually everyone assumes it is factual. Which of these two rumors is most troubling to you? The second one. Uh, without a doubt, because A, I can, I mean, you've got to take responsibility for shit that you do. You know, what people I mean? thinking like, that I, you would steal. Well, no, like I, I, well, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't want, like that would I bother me I the wouldn't most. steal. I don't want people, everybody to be upset and hating me about something that's not even true. Yeah. And that would drive me crazy. No way to fucking just let them know and get them to believe me. That would drive me nuts. And if they're all upset at me for something that I did do. I'm not saying it, it's it's not sexually irresponsible to fucking get drunk and just have sex with a coworker that I don't Who's know. Who's married? Happens Who's stands. married, yeah. Craig, how would your views about war, politics, and the role of the military change if all future conflicts were fought by armies of robots? That is to say, if all nations agreed to conduct wars exclusively with machines so that human casualties would be virtually non-existent. I would say, how do you gauge who won the war? Like, right. like seriously, like, okay, so all your robots are gone. What now? Now you just want us to back down and say, no, no, yeah, we lost. Okay, do whatever you want. You won the war. Whatever you want, it was like fine. Like, if people were terms. really committed to their cause, they would Yes, yeah, st- then back. they would start, you know, illegally fighting with themselves as themselves. They would fight back. They wouldn't. If they really were devoted to their cause and their country, they wouldn't let There's no way you could the stop, machines come over. You know, and, you could stop every individual from, you know, from acting that way. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't what what was the final question? I mean, it like, would make me less less like if I knew that machines were just going to fight other machines, yeah, I wouldn't be as like upset about that. I think war would like, just be young more people of a video killing game. other young people. You know, yeah. that like it At would that point, it would though, definitely I'd be like what the fuck is the point? What yeah. the fuck are we doing? Are you guys serious? You're that you're that committed to this fucking archaic idea of violence and domination. Through, you know... Aggression. Yeah. Yeah, aggression. Like, what the fuck? Like, seriously? We're sending toys out there to fight now. Like, yeah. I come mean, on. It, there, definitely the impact and weight of war would just on decrease. on fighting, then, if it's, yeah. at, if it's reached this point, guys. Like, we've reached Kutcher levels here. Consider this possibility. Think about deceased TV star John Ritter. Now, pretend Ritter had never become famous. Pretend he was never affected by the trappings of fame and try to imagine what his personality would have been like. You lost me at Think About John Ritter. Uh, Now imagine (laughs) that this person, the unfamous John Ritter, is a character in a situation comedy. Now you are also a character in this sitcom, and the unfamous John Ritter character is your sitcom father. (laughs) However, this sitcom is actually your real life. In other words, you are living inside a sitcom. Everything about your life is construction, featuring the unfamous John Ritter playing himself (laughs) in the role of your TV father. But that is not a sitcom. This is your real life. How would you feel about this? Now, with the knowledge that I had this life, I would feel very sad. <laughs> <laughs> what? What happened to my real dad? <laughs> what happened to the famous John Ritter? Oh, I don't like the unfamous John Ritter. He's boring. He's not famous at all. <laughs> they took his dad. <laughs> <laughs> they took his dad. <laughs> they took his dad. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> god damn you john ritter again did you hear about how there was an episode of three's company where he sat down on a bed and his dick fell out of his shorts no and it was plain as day and nobody noticed it for like 30 years they aired it in syndication and reruns and somebody noticed it and called the company 
like the cable company and wow. complained and they were like oh my god and no one had ever noticed that it. it's just there so for like now a it's second edited? or did they just pull it up yeah they so... cut it was just a second so they just cut like that second out but it was very obvious <laughs> i didn't see it so just, for so i've not, heard <laughs> for so for it to go so long unnoticed do you think that means he's <laughs> you not said noticeable? for it to go so long <laughs> unnoticed craig you die of natural causes oh no <laughs> is that not preferable? Well, I don't know. It depends on how early it is. How natural are they? <laughs> how natural? Hmm. Picture in the fry meme. How natural are these causes? <laughs> Upon death, you are absorbed skyward. You ascend toward a warm white light. You immediately realize you have entered the afterlife. And, much to your surprise, it is exactly like the cliched, conventional, kindergarten version of Christian heaven. Oh, no. <laughs> you enter through gates made of pearl. The ground is covered Ooh. by a white cloud-like fog. Angels fly around you and play the harp. You are wearing a comfortable white robe. Everyone mm. there is aimlessly walking around, smiling broadly, perfectly content. This, it seems, is how you will spend eternity. Upon your arrival, you are greeted by Jesus, and he looks exactly like the stereotypical depiction of Jesus. Huh. So they were right. As an aside, read white. Welcome to heaven, he says. I think you will like it here. And I look forward to loving you unconditionally for the duration of time. But Thanks, I also realize Jesus? no problem, Craig. <laughs> Anything for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jesus and I are pals. <laughs> That'd be good. Uh, I'm I'm not seeing any downfall to this so far. I mean Egyptian cotton robes. Well then he says, <sighs> But Craig, I also realize heaven isn't necessarily for everyone. Oh. So I always give newcomers a chance to go to the other place if that's where they would prefer. Are Being you hell? Oh, no, says Jesus. Not hell. Certainly not hell. I would never send you to hell. Not you, Craig. (laughs) (laughs) All right. He's a good guy. This Jesus. This Jesus guy. (laughs) But you can go to somewhere that isn't here. It's a viable post-life option. About 18% of our potential residents go in that direction. What is the other place like, you ask? I can't tell you, says Jesus. Oh, no. But if you do elect to go there, you can never come back here. And you only have 20 minutes to decide. Why only 20, you ask? (laughs) You're totally, like, playing the part. (laughs) Because I'm Jesus, says Jesus. What do you do? Jesus is not so much a cool guy anymore. And then he pulls off the mask, and it's that motherfucking (laughs) Elemist. And you're like, I knew it. I thought you were going to say steampunk Morgan Freeman. (laughs) But why is Steampunk Walker for good? Because, Craig. <laughs> it's because Steampunk. Every man has to make this decision, Craig. Do you want to go to heaven? Oh, man. So or do you it's want just. To go to the other place. So it's not hell, but I don't know. Did he it's really give me hell, that Craig. thing? He really did that? No, that was. How would, how would <laughs> Chuck Klosterman write that in a book? Parentheses. <laughs> um, man. Uh, Jesus, you're not sounding so cool anymore. Uh, would I be able to hang out with Jesus still if I went to the other place? I don't know. I... You said you can't ever come back. Like, Yeah, you're making so a choice. So how, how, how do I know the if the other, other 18% actually like it there? You don't. You know, what if it's just like purgatory? Da- you no, you know, know. no, 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 no. I'm you're staying, staying in heaven. heaven, man. Me and Jesus are pals. Yeah. We're buddies. We're going to play, uh, we're going to play some magic later. You know all the coolest, interesting people went to that other place, but who knows if it was the right decision. Oh, man. I guarantee you it's purgatory. I'm not even going to worry about it. Do they have... Why would Jesus be a dick like that? He's like, look, we're running low on space. We can't just send people <laughs> to purgatory that haven't done anything wrong. And, and steampunk Morgan Freeman is like, give them a choice. Take the red pill or the blue pill. These glasses make me feel like Morpheus. I think once once uh, conversation reaches feel... steampunk Morgan Freeman Jesus, it's over. It's time to retire the Chuck Klosterman questions, uh, as of course all those questions are totally copyright by Chuck Klosterman and his publisher. I see Scribner Books here. Yes, absolutely. We did not write these. Uh, check out the books; they're fucking awesome. That wasn't even a portion. Well, I mean, it was a portion, (laughs) but that wasn't even like a fraction. Well, I mean, it was a fraction, but not a sizable one. What are you saying? Of the fucking questions in these books, let alone the awesome essays. He's totally worth your time to read. And if you're a fan of Chuck Klosterman's and that's why you listen to this, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope we did it justice. 
Yeah, hit us up on the Facebook page. Tell us how you would have answered the questions. Facebook.com slash Fairpoint Podcast. Of course. Subscribe on iTunes. You got to do that. Yeah. Fairpoint Podcast on iTunes. And do you have any recommendations this week, Nathan? Of course I got a recommendation. Always, sir. I do as well. Um, I wanted to stick with the theme here, and I, I got an author to recommend you. Uh, especially if you, if you like Chuck Klosterman and his witty style of writing, um, you might enjoy this guy. He's a fictional He's he's not a fictional he's writer. He's a fictional character. I almost said he's a fictional writer. He's not a fictional writer. He's a real writer. He's he writes fiction writer. stories. He's a fiction writer. Those two letters make a big difference. His name's Christopher Moore. I've read two books of his. Uh, two and a half. I've read, I'm reading another one. I've been reading it for months now because I just haven't had time to actually pick it back up. But uh, Lamb was one of them I read, which is the gospel according to Jesus' best friend, Biff. Okay, you were telling um, me about that book. Yeah, Biff's kind of like an asshole. He was left out of the Bible for being an asshole. And it's it's very funny. Extremely conservative religious people may find it blasphemous. But uh, whether you're religious or not religious, you can enjoy it. It's uh, it, it's it's probably not going to be enjoyable if you have an extremely closed mind on that subject. Some people may have issue with the content in the book. His friend isn't necessarily. The, the but it's, best it's used to a, the best effect. I mean, most religions in the world have characters like that. And Christianity is one of the few odd ones out that doesn't really have those. Aside those, from like Judas? Well, Did Judas isn't then? really a character. I mean, like like trickster characters or characters that ne- don't necessarily represent good morals but aren't necessarily characterized as evil. You know right. what I mean? And um, a lot of those characters do have their place in world mythologies and religions and stuff like that. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like the, you know, yeah. it's almost like the the prototype, you know, Jay and Silent Bob characters. Yeah, kind of like the, the asshole guy or, the, you know. The, yeah, which... Wise guy. Yeah. And then the other book I read by him was called A Dirty Job, which is about a guy who has to take up the position as the Grim Reaper. Uh, they were both fantastic books. I would recommend either of them, and I'm that sure... That sounds interesting. It, or Oh, it was. <laughs> and I'm sure the rest of his, his books are fucking awesome, too. I look forward to reading more. Well, I also had a book, too. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, just re recently rewatched uh, John Dies at the End because it's out on Netflix now. Okay. And I would anybody that might see it on Netflix or whatever and be interested in watching it, I would highly recommend watch, read the book first. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's written by David Wong. He's a Cracked dot com writer, and obviously has another book coming out. Uh, or is that out already? The this sequel? book is the full sequel? of spiders. I think it may be out already. I need to read that. I we read John Dies read at that. the End. I fucking loved it. Um, I feel like if I watched that movie and hadn't read the book, I would have no idea what the fuck Completely was going Completely lost. It was, yeah. It's so confusing because they just skip around and, you know, but it made you realize that they cannot make that movie, it's make that book into a two-hour movie. Such like, a long, huge yeah. book with so much um, detail. Exactly. Yeah. And there's like a time it was span of a years. Great effort, you know? And it was, for what it was, it was good. It was enjoyable. But it doesn't As, touch the book. The book's fucking amazing. So my recommendation is to go get that book and read it. Yeah. Give give it a fair shot that it deserves because it's hilarious. It's and both it's funny and up. it's horrifying. Yeah. Like, and I don't mean, you know, a lot of times they release horror comedies, but those usually lean towards scary or funny. This is both. It can literally, you can read it and it makes you nervous and uneasy and it's scary. Right, and then exactly. you can read it and it makes you laugh out loud. It's a great book. Good recommendation, sir. All right. There we go. Don't ask us if John dies at the end. If you want to know, read the fucking book. Just read book. it. Seriously. Well, it's been a fantastic fucking time. Thank you for joining us discussing the wonderful works of Chuck Klosterman. Oh, no problem. I, it was a pleasure to be here. I wasn't thanking you, Craig. Oh. From the Secret Room, I'm Nathan Cavasser. I'm Craig Lewis. It's Meet us back real. here next Wednesday. <laughs> Steampunk Morgan Freeman. 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 I do not know who Steampunk Morgan Freeman is.